Come Holy Ghost in Love, arranged by Healy Willen. had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. 
Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Word of God, word of life. Spirit of gentleness. The second reading today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. 
to another various kinds of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greek, slaves are free, and we were made to drink of one Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading. Gospel, according to St. John for this Pentecost Sunday. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I've missed saying those words to our flock, saying them live on Sunday mornings. And I am in the church building now, but the place kind of echoes because it's uh, mostly empty, at least of, of the flock I so dearly love to see here. But I am reminded that we are never alone. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Some call it the birthday of the church. The day that the church was formed by the Holy Spirit. We know as Lutherans, we are called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that makes us church. And as I recall from the proper preface to our Holy Communion liturgy, what we call the great thanksgiving. We begin the thanksgiving with the words, it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In all times and in all places. Well, it is the end of the month of May. And as I'm standing in the church right now with my red pyramids on, there are... Um, still purple banners up, pyramids on the altar, the pulpit, and the lectern from Lent, which was the last time we gathered here. 
There are white banners celebrating Easter, and I'm wearing red vestments. <laughs> In all times and places, it is indeed right, our duty, and our joy to give thanks to God. Today we give thanks to God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift of the risen Christ to his people, the church. If you recall, the Spirit is woven throughout Scripture, beginning at creation, where the Spirit hovered over the waters. The Spirit was part of the initial creation. The Spirit shows up at Jesus' baptism in the form of a dove. We really don't know why God picked a dove. Although, isn't that what Noah sent out of the ark? It is. When the dove came back with an olive branch, it was God's indication to Noah that it was safe to come out again. And so the dove shows up at Jesus' baptism. And Jesus promises, as many of us have studied in the Gospel of John these past weeks, several months now, Jesus at the very end of his life, promises the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples so that they would never be alone. Even in the absence of physical Jesus, Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. And earlier in John, when Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus, and he's talking about being born from above. Jesus says, the spirit blows where it will. And in some ways, I think that's where we are today. Uh, we're not physically together in the church. And I know that's hard. <laughs> it's hard for me. It's hard for many people. But I want you to think about that first Pentecost, where it was 50 days after the resurrection. 50 days, and some of the disciples had seen the risen Christ, but not all of them. What was it to be a follower of Jesus after his crucifixion? Some knew he was risen, some were holding on to the story that he was risen. But I can guarantee not everybody in Jerusalem that day believed that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. Until the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit poured out on the disciples. And the vision is like like tongues of fire, good fire, the kind of fire that refines and brings space for new life. And the Spirit is breath. Throughout the Bible, again, and you've heard me say this if you've heard me preach before, the word for spirit in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word ruach. And the word for spirit in the Greek in the New Testament is pneuma, where we get our word pneumonia and all other things that happen with the lungs. Spirit is breath. And so when you read the Bible and you see the word wind or spirit, 
They're interchangeable. Like Jesus said, the wind, the spirit will blow where it will. Do you remember at creation when God made man and woman out of clay? And they were just clay. They were just, they were, they were dirt figures. Like, maybe like a child's modeling exercise. But there was no life in them. Until God breathed into them. They were just dirt until God breathed into them. Just like God's breath blew over the valley of the dry bones in Ezekiel. God's breath, God's spirit brought life. Do you see where I'm going? The spirit is always associated with life, which is the breath of God. So these past months, we've all heard probably more news than we can process about COVID-19. I wouldn't be doing my job as a preacher not to name that. And the most frightening thing about COVID-19, I mean, aside from the back fact that it kills a large number of people that, that it touches, is that many of those people die because they can't breathe. I remember an experience as a child. I was five, but it's still very, very vivid. I nearly drowned. I fell off of a, a floaty toy. I remember the terror of not being able to breathe. This week, this weekend, my family is supposed to be in Minneapolis celebrating my graduation from uh, seminary, my doctoral degree in ministry. And we were supposed to be in Minneapolis, but that was canceled. Um, there'll be a virtual ceremony tomorrow. It was canceled because of COVID, can't breathe. But this, this week, we see protests about a black man who was killed. And once again, while crying out, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. It's tragic. And no matter what your feelings on response to this, here is where the church needs to respond. The church is the living breath of God, fueled by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gives life. And the life is the life of Jesus. Because the Spirit makes us the body of Christ in the world. And the Spirit breathes life into us. And that makes us life breathers into others. Brothers and sisters, we have a joyful message. We have a message that God loves everyone. Saint and sinner, every color, every nationality, every race. It is the Spirit's power, the Spirit of Jesus, who came as God incarnate to show us what God would look like if God had flesh and bones. And Jesus' message was that of love. 
So between now and whenever we get together again, pray for the Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on us, breath of God. Breathe on the world, breath of God. Put out the fires of anger and dissent and hatred and fill us with the spirit of life. The spirit of life. And then make us life bringers. Breath of life bringers to a world that's dearly needing some good news. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God loves you so much. All of you. I pray that we'll be back together soon. We'll be back together safely. And we'll be back together to share this news with each other. Until then, may the peace of the risen Christ and his Holy Spirit keep your hearts and your minds, your hands and your feet, and all of your deeds rooted and grounded in Christ our Lord.